Hello and welcome to a brief introduction to new features in Office 2016. Uh, this is going to be another video through the NMU Help Desk. And we're just going to go through a couple of new additions to Office 2016 that you may need to get used to. So I'll use most of them in Word since everyone pretty much uses Word. So here we have a regular text document which just says hello and welcome. Um, and the first feature that I'm going to show you is called Smart Lookup. So to use Smart Lookup, what you're going to want to do is you're going to highlight a word, and then you can right-click it, and you'll see that there's an option down in the drop-down menu that says Smart Lookup. And what you can do is you can left-click that, and it'll open up the Insights pane. And you have an option to either explore or define, depending on the word. And if you explore, it's going to show you all sorts of stuff about it. It'll show you Wikipedia pages, uh, definitions of it, Obviously, you can just choose define as well, and you'll find different definitions. But this will just allow you to look up what you're looking for uh, using the entire internet without ever having to leave Word. It's a very useful tool, uh, especially if you're trying to get definitions or Wikipedia entries, stuff of that sort. It can be very helpful for you. So we'll close out of this. Another feature we're going to learn about today is called Tell Me. And that's a feature that was added. And it's this bar right up here. It says, tell me what you want to do. And basically what you can do here is you can type in what you want to do and Office will interpret it and walk you through it. So say I want to make a comment on this Word document that I have. It's an example, but I'll type it myself. So leave a comment. And you'll see that it gave me a couple of options and I'll click insert comment. So say I want to insert a comment, I'll click it. And it'll add a comment right to the end of what I was doing, and I can type in here. And then anytime I were to hover over this, I would see that comment. But I don't want to leave a comment, and now you know how to use it. Um, and tell me it works for more than comments. Um, a popular one will probably be mail merge. And you'll see start mail merge, and there'll be a step by step wizard. And it's a very useful tool. So if you don't know how to do something, feel free to use Tell Me, and it'll walk you through whatever you're trying to do. Another thing that is available through all of Office is the uh, introduction of themes. And I believe it's going to be in the Design tab. Yep. So here we are. We have some themes throughout all of Office. And you can choose whichever themes you want. Um, and it's just going to alter the appearance of whatever document you're in. Uh, you have selections from the type of theme up at the top as well. And then you can choose the color scheme and the font layout and stuff like that. I'm not going to get too into themes because I don't need this to be super flashy, but it'll just alter uh, the appearance of your document. Another interesting thing that was added is called ink annotations, and I believe that's in review. Yep, so the review tab at the top in Word, you'll see this option that says start inking, and it'll tell you a little bit about ink annotations. Um, what this allows you to do is you can draw on your documents and basically leave yourself little notes. So I've started inking and you can change the color if you want. So I'll change it to purple highlighter and you'll see that I could highlight this if I wanted to or I could just change it to pen and say this is what I want to look at. There's a little arrow and you can stop inking and everything will stay there. Uh, you can choose to keep it if you want by saving it or you can just click eraser and click all your lines and everything will go away. And that's basically all there is to ink annotations. Um, Word also has another feature that I'm not going to be getting into. It's called, um, they have more uh, enhanced collaboration and sharing. Uh, do not use this. If you stumble upon this, do not use it. Uh, use the department share like you're used to. Otherwise, this could have um, negative effects later down the road. There may be something lost between the collaboration feature that you would not have gotten if you would have just used department share. So please, please use department share. It'll save you a lot of heartache. Um, another thing that we're going to look at is uh, some stuff that's in Excel. So in Excel, we have uh, something called ink equations. And I'm going to look it up in the tell me feature because why not use something? I actually have it recently used. Uh, so we'll look it up, for instance. So ink equation. And you'll see it gives us a couple of options like ink annotation, but we want ink equation. And what this does is it allows us to physically draw the equations and answers instead of actually having to go in and find the symbols and then typing them in manually. And it's very useful, especially if you're doing stuff that has like exponents. 
um, it, it just, or symbols, letters, anything like that, anything that you would have to go and look for, it's, it's going to save you a lot of trouble. Um, so I have a touchpad, so bear with me. I don't have a touch screen. It'd be much easier with a touch screen. But we'll say A squared plus B. And you'll see that it popped up there, and I can click insert. Boom, just inserted it into my document or into my Excel spreadsheet. And it's up to you how you use it, but it's a very useful tool. And I'd recommend getting a feel for it if you're planning on using a lot of equations in Excel. Very helpful. Um, another thing that was added is get and transform. Let me find it. It's going to be a new query. So this whole tab right here, this whole box is the get and transform. And they added uh, the query function, which allows you to combine data from multiple sources. So you can combine your queries, you can merge, append. Basically, this is going to let you um, customize your data and make it easier for you to deal with. It's just going to help you out uh, with uh, formatting and stuff. It's going to make it so you can have it how you want it. And it's a very excellent feature that I'd recommend trying out if that's interesting to you. Um, another thing that was added is 3D maps which allows you to uh, visualize uh, geographic data on a 3D map. Let's see if we can find it on here. Yep, click on 3D, we got 3D map. And any data you have, it would let you visualize it on a 3D map over time. And I don't have any data that I'm gonna type in, but it will pop up a big picture of the world and let you customize your journey more and let you see what you wanna see. Um, and it'll basically, it'll let you visualize your data over time on this 3D map. So it's a pretty cool thing. And now I'm going to close out of that, and I'm actually going to open a new Excel spreadsheet. And I'm not really going to open one, but I'm going to show you some interesting stuff that have been added to the templates. So there are new financial templates like cash flow analysis, stock symbols. Um, these are just going to let you track your earnings and expenditures or compare the performance of stock. So if you're curious about how much you make or how much you're spending or how to balance all of that, that's newly added, and you can see specific templates for how to manage that information. Uh, another thing that was added was calendar insights templates, and th these are uh, just gonna let you import your calendar from uh, Exchange, and it's just so you can get a better handle on your time and see how you're, how you're spending your day, see what your free hours are like, and that's, that's entirely up to you. You don't have to use these functions, they're just there if you're interested in them. If you're ever wondering, hey, how can I make some more time to do this? Well, then the calendar insights is gonna be for you. There's new chart types in all of Office, and it's not just Excel, but the new chart types are, uh, they added tree maps, waterfalls, Pareto's, histograms, box and whisk whisker charts, and uh, sun sunburst charts. So those are all going to be added, and they're all just in the table list for every, every version of, uh, not every version of Office, but every program within Office 2016. Um, and now I'm going to close out of this, and I'm going to open up PowerPoint. So PowerPoint has a couple of new features, and it's going to be pretty handy, especially for since you're using these to give presentations. These are going to be excellent tools for you to use. Uh, so I would say the first thing that's worth noting is they've added a highlight feature. And how I'm going to start this off is I'm going to start a slideshow from the beginning, and I'm going to open it up in presenter view. I'm going to show you, and please make a note of this. So you'll see that in my next slide, uh, it says how to highlight and then text one, text two, nothing on the page. Well, I'll move over to that. And you'll see this option right here. It says pen and laser pointer tools. So what you can do is you can click that and then click highlighter. And I'm actually going to change the ink color for emphasis. So say I want this to be blue. Just going to kind of poorly color this in blue with highlighter. And we'll say I am going to circle this one in red. So they're both there, they're both highlighted, and they both have emphasis drawn to them based on whatever color you use. And that's entirely up to you. Like you don't have to circle it, you don't have to fill it in, you can do it however you like to do. But what I wanted to mention is I'm gonna go back a slide, and you'll see that on the next slide it says how to highlight, text one, text two, and there's nothing there. So I'll go back and you'll see my highlights. So like, you won't be able to see what you've highlighted ahead of time. 
So your students aren't going to get to look ahead and see the important information. But anything that you feel like needs to be emphasized, you can put there and just highlight it, circle it, do whatever you want to do. And then when you get out of your uh, slideshow, it's going to ask you if you want to keep your ink annotations. And that's just going to keep them on the slides the next time you open the slides. And that's entirely up to you. Um, I'm going to discard them because this isn't an important, uh, an important presentation. But if you have something that you know you're going to use down the road and you want something emphasized and you want to highlight it, this is exactly what you're looking for. Uh, PowerPoint also added a screen record feature so you can record your slideshow and you can click this drop down right here and you can either start recording from the beginning or start from the current slide. So we'll say beginning and I'm not going to do any of this stuff right now. I'm not going to start recording, uh, but you'll see that it lets you select what you want to record before you begin. Slide and animation timings, narrations, inks, and laser pointers. So if you were to save all of those things like narrations, ink, and laser pointers, it would allow them to see the highlights that you made in the recording. So if you were to record a PowerPoint presentation, uh, they would be able to follow along and see the important features that you've emphasized with a highlighter. So it's just another helpful tool out there for anyone that's interested. And then I'm gonna close out of these and I'm just gonna go over some brief, brief additions to Outlook. I'm not gonna open Outlook. Um, so Outlook made it easier to send attachments. They just increase the functionality of it. It's much simpler. It allows you to browse deeper into your computer if you need to. It shows you the most recent files you've been working on. So if you're like, hey, I want to show my coworker this thing, this project that I've recently been doing, it'll be right in your recent uh, documents and you'll be able to send it and everything is awesome. Um, also, there's email address internalization and that just allows you to send or receive mail from any email address regardless of language. So if someone sends you an email from a foreign language, um, Originally, Outlook would misinterpret that, and you may not have gotten it at all. But now, Outlook recognizes uh, foreign languages to you and me and is able to get you those emails or send emails to those email addresses without causing any issue. I should also note that in PowerPoint specifically, but across all of Office, um, there's better resolution. So if you're to present on like a big screen in PowerPoint, uh, the resolution is going to be clearer, more crisp. People in the back of the room are going to be able to see everything better just because of the overall increase in resolution. So that wraps up all of the new features in Office 2016. My name is Sean, and this is another help desk video. Hopefully, we got you what you needed to know, and everything is good. You have a good rest of your day.